Qualifying for the Mexican Grand Prix, we have a Ferrari on pole, but it's Sainz on pole, not the fastest guy ever one lap in Formula One. And can we? Can you think of a more polarizing driver right now than Charles Leclerc? I, I do not understand it. His fans absolutely love him. They worship him. And his detractors think that he's massively overrated. Yes. He must he must sit somewhere in the middle of that. Let's have a look. So uh, Amar, like we're we're both Charles Leclerc fans. Um I, I don't think that's much of a secret. Uh, so this might be uh, the least argumentative video we ever put out, but perhaps it will be. I don't know. Um, but they, they, well, whenever Charles makes any kind of mistake, anything, there's like a massive outcry of uh, um, of what's wrong with him. Like he's massively overrated. Look what he just did. And and for some reason. That that one little moment is taken as a microcosm of everything that he's ever done, and it never it never is. Like if you look at how he has performed over the course of this season, that that cliche that he is the fastest over one lap in Formula One right now is borne out against Carlos Sainz, who is a very very quick driver. The argument then goes, well, he should be putting Carlos in the weeds. Like he should be Carlos should be nowhere near him. Why? And, and I don't I, I, personally. I don't see it that way. But perhaps I'm looking at this wrong. I don't know. No, you're not. No, you're not. But let's just be honest. Where, where the criticism and hate comes from? Because it it comes from uh, your sort of neck of the woods, and uh, there might be a little bit of a clue in uh, in what your T-shirt says there. No, because what are you what are you talking uh, about? I have no there idea what you're talking about. Might be a certain person uh, you know that actually called me out after qualifying uh, to ask if I enjoyed it. So let's be honest. I'm. I'm not one to call people out like that, but but I got called out. So so there we go. Here we are now. But, but <laughs> and since we're here, and since we the brand, are not petty, you are you are. We're we're, we're going to be next level petty. And listen, no one can do <laughs> petty than better than me. Uh, but let's just be honest here. What mistake? What oh, he did make. He, he did make a mistake. He did. Okay, yes, yes. I understand. Se second two. Second two. You definitely. Need. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't but, even understand. I, I don't know. Look, if you're someone who singles out Charles Leclerc for this, I have to be honest with you. And I'm looking at you, Cam. You're just a hater. Let's just be honest. I'm going to put it out there because th that's all you're doing. If if there's valid criticism, and I'm happy to come on your show, by the way, too. So, so here you go. Um, you can be critical of things, but let's just be honest. First of all, being P4 in the Mexican Grand Prix is hardly the worst thing. One might argue that being on the second row is actually much better than, than being in pole position. So let's be honest. Number two, look at what's happening in this race in front of Leclerc. He is perfectly poised to get into P2 or even P1 at the end of what that whatever that melee looks like. Because you have Max and Lando who are going to go at it. Carlos doesn't care. Who knows what can happen? So <laughs> it might be best to do that. Okay? And listen, mistakes happen. Well, we're pretending like he, he put it in the wall or something. Oh, by the way, let me call you guys out. All of you that have not for weeks on end called out George Russell, the guy from what, Kingsland? Whatever crap you say about that, right? He has been putting it in the wall for weeks after weeks. I haven't seen one of y'all call him out on any of those. Not one of y'all. And I think I have to go back and look at it. But he's had more free practice crashes than anyone else. In fact, there's an article in F1.com that talks about George Russell admitting to it as well and saying, just forget the idea of building a new car anyway. He is saying that. So let's just be honest. This is way too critical. And if you're going to be critical about Charles after qualifying in which he puts it on P4, you're just a hater, man. I got to be honest there. I'll let I'll seize the floor to you. Oof. Uh, say how you really feel. I, 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 I promise you, I was not expecting that from you <laughs> at all. I've this. Hey, I've been sitting on this, and I don't know what's going to happen in the race, but li listen, there's just absolutely nothing. I mean, he's won two races from BP4, so, I mean, good God, what are we talking about here? Oof. Um, so, okay, so the first thing I want to say is uh, congratulations to Carlos Sainz. That, that both of his... Q3 laps were good enough for pole, and he was the only driver to get under one minute 16, um, which is incredible. Great, great, great driving. Uh, and that that means that that's two races uh, on the trot uh, in which uh, Carlos Sainz is out-qualified uh, Charles Leclerc. 
so far it hasn't been translated into race wins, but uh, Carlos has been right there. What I see whenever something like this happens, and it's only been two races, is that suddenly you get a whole heap of uh, comments saying, Carlos Sainz is amazing. He should not have been let go by Ferrari. That, I think, is another conversation. But it then it then turns into Car um, Carlos Sainz is so much better than Charles Leclerc. He, he's got his head on. He can overtake. He can think his way through a race. And everyone forgets everything that 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 Charles has done. And my contention here is that you don't have to take with one hand and give with the other. It doesn't have to be that way. Both of these drivers can be operating at an unbelievable level and both those things can still be true. It doesn't mean that just because Carlos has operated brilliantly that Charles is somehow a delinquent. That's that's that don't that that's that's such a black and white way of looking at it and it ignores any kind of nuance in the argument go on so this is why i'm calling out your your friend there right with with the logo on the t-shirt right because the name calling it's not, it's not me i'm not saying I anything I, I just i clarified that the name calling is the laziest thing that we do and oh by the way this applies to lando norris as well and you and i have, argu have our arguments on this too look we have seen in this season more than any other season everything changes race to race the margins are thin the windows are shorter and it's just a matter of few inches. It's not egregious in any of the things that are happening, right? So we are seeing things where, where the margin for error is so tight. So I'm 100% with you. This is as much a reflection of Carlos being great on this particular weekend than anything else. He had not one, but two pole <laughs> position qualifying laps. And yeah. maybe even if Leclerc doesn't make a mistake, He's arguably just on the front row more than anything else. So maybe that's I a agree with that. But we cannot come into this behaving like he is on P18 or P19. And oh, by the way, I just also want to add, because I'm seeing collateral damage all around Charles that nobody's pointing out. We went ahead and crowned Oscar Piastri as the next coming of whoever. And he has been SH1T. Let's just say that. I'm not one to call people out and drivers particularly, but he has not had a good run since the mini DRS was closed. So we're not being consistent and fair. I get it. We're putting Charles on a different pedestal because we believe that he is he is outstanding. He's championship material. He should be winning. He should be winning championships and he just hasn't had that. But let's not do that. Just absolutely okay. not. Okay. Uh, and, okay. Uh, and putting any whataboutism to one side i do want to examine this whole uh carlos is better than charles leclerc because of these things right um just looking at qualifying because as i say carlos has one one qualifying or two where he's ahead of charles and suddenly oh charles lost his shine just to just just so we know what we're talking about right the current head-to-head -head between these two this season is 12 7 in Leclerc's favor, right? 12 7. That's 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 a drubbing in anyone else's book. But Carlos is a very, very good driver. And I've said this before, he will often start a bit slower in terms of he'll have a little bit um of a deficit, but he will work. He'll go in the sim, he'll be intelligent, uh, he'll he'll look at what he needs to do, the data from the other driver, the data from the sim, the data from the wind tunnel. What is it that I need to do? to improve my time and gradually he will get there he will get back up to the level of the of his teammate and you can see that in the times right in terms of pure pace um he's actually only 0.05 percent slower than Charles Leclerc this season and if you want to talk about that in terms of lap time that's about four hundredths of a second around a 90 second lap I do want to get a bit nerdy about this because you'll see different numbers uh, in the in, in the media uh, saying that Carlos is a bit closer than that. The way that I do this is that I use, first of all, a super time. So that gives you a percentage difference. Why do I use a super time? Because it corrects for the length of a lap. So being a hundredth, a hundredth of a second behind your teammate in Austria is a completely different ball game to being a, a hundredth of a second behind your teammate at spa for example because of the length of the track so that's why i use super times it gives you a percentage difference at the end i think it's the most accurate way of doing it the other thing is that a lot of people will use a median so if you if you don't remember your high school stats 
the median, if you look at a group of numbers, is the middle number. And what that the idea behind that is that it gets rid of any outliers that might skew your result. And I think that that's fine if you're looking at population statistics. So if you're looking at like the weight of of a hundred people, um, and you're trying to work out um what the what the average weight is for a group of people, then that's fine. Median is great because it absolutely takes your your uh, your outliers out for for whatever reason, illness or um, whatever doesn't matter. But when you're looking at the stats of two drivers, I don't want to be taking out outliers unless there's a specific reason so if there's an engine failure i'll take that result out i won't include it in my in my analysis but if you're taking those out then the mean which is what i use is the most accurate way of doing it and i think that gives you the result that i've just given you now geeky i know you could skip through that bit of the video if you want to i think it's important it's what's what's giving me glasses on my face um haha <laughs> um i mean so I think if you look at those, if you look at those two stats, twelve seven head to head and four hundreds quicker, that tells a story. It tells you that even though Carlos can work as hard as he wants to, as hard as he can, intelligently as he can, to get quicker, to get closer to Charles, Charles always has that little bit extra. This is a good problem for Ferrari to have. They have two drivers that are, that are absolutely maximizing the package they have. So when somebody turns around and says um, the Ferrari is slow, you can't blame it on the drivers. You know it's because of the car. And I think that's an important differentiator to make. But to say that Carlos is somehow overall quicker than, than Charles because of one or two qualifying results, I think is ridiculous. Shaz, I think the people who are saying that, are, are just simply lazy and want to create clicks and content. That's all it is. If you are a discerning Formula One fan and, and someone that has some level of even novice expertise, that is not the storyline. Ferrari is only the storyline in this particular race after qualifying in that they seem like they had the upper hand over both McLaren and Red Bull. That's number one, the story. Number two, the story is the gap between Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri, which is humongous. I mean, we're talking about Leclerc and, and science, but look at the day. One guy can't even get out of Q1. And by the way, this is not the first weekend that that's happening too. So, you know, you, you can look at that. But I, I think that this is simply, look, you gave reason, you gave statistics, but let's just be honest. Carlos had a better qualifying. That's all it is. We don't know what the race is going to be. And, and, and a great driver he is too. Like, I'm, and, no and doubt. great driver. I mean, we're, we're not talking about putting a rookie in there that's beating Leclerc. Like, what are we doing here? And again, Leclerc is qualifying P4. It's not It's not like he's P10 or P12. Like, what are we doing here? We, we're, not, we're not willing to do nuance because we simply want to create spiciness that's all it is that's all that's all i can think about and we'll come back and look at what the race looks like but let's be honest again being in the second row is actually advantageous in this race more than any other race perhaps anywhere else so you know i don't know i don't know why we're gonna do that here we're just nitpicking on stuff i mean i guess the other storyline could have been something different but we want to talk about this so i'm not mm -hmm. sure and hey listen as someone who is not looking forward to what next year looks like with lewis hamilton coming into the season not because i don't like lewis hamilton i love him but everything that the cult comes in i mean i this is just a preview for me so that's my takeaway i know this is not your, the answer to your question but well oh. Perhaps therein lies the crux of why Charles Leclerc is currently so polarizing. But on that bombshell, I think it's time to leave it. Um, if we've offended anybody, any other content creators included, I apologize on the on behalf of both of us. Um, if you like what we're doing here, please like. If you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, please leave us a comment. We'll read every single one as always, and we will re respond to as many as we possibly can. And we will see you guys in the next one. Respect.